Okay, now we're going to go through creating a new email. Uh, there's two ways you can start it. You can either go through the campaigns menu and do it as part of a new campaign build or you can come directly through the emails menu here, uh, which is where I am now. So click on create new email. You might see more than one template for you here on this selection page. Just choose the one that's the most appropriate to what you want to build and use this template. Give your email a name, it's just an internal reference, and then click continue. Then you come through to this email building page. Um, there's a lot of options available to you here, so I just suggest to everyone to come in and have a look around, play with uh, what's available just so that you can get comfortable with, with what's achievable. Um, but there are a few important things to note and I'll take you through those. So email name up the top, as I said, is just an internal reference, just something for you to remember it by. The subject here is what your contacts will see in their inbox, so pay particular attention to that. As a auto account user, you don't need to worry about the category here, so just leave it blank. If you're on enterprise, choose the most appropriate category for what you're building. If nothing uh, here suits the purpose of what you're building, you can create a new category as well. Okay, moving on, the from and reply to address will be automatically populated for you, so you don't need to worry about those. And then when you come down to the default template beneath, you'll find as I scroll over each panel, uh, there's a little pencil icon. Um, now that indicates that that panel is editable. If I scroll over the header here, you can see that pencil disappears and also the footer. So that indicates that the header and footer are locked. You can't actually take them, uh, change them or take them out. So that's just ensuring that you always send out with your branding, your contact details and an unsub link. So anything else in between is editable. Uh, if you click on a panel, that will make it active. Uh, you can see above we've got the panel options. So apart from the header and footer, any panel you can delete. Uh, you can duplicate a panel. So if you have two that are very similar, you can build the first one and then duplicate it and just tweak the second one to suit. You can move a panel up one, you can move a panel down one, or you can pick up a panel and move it anywhere you like in your template. Uh, there's an options wheel here as well. I'll uh, take you over all those details in, in another panel in a sec. Um, anytime you have text in a panel, you'll get the options bar, but you'll also get a formatting, a text formatting bar as well. So you've got all the normal um, options like bold, italics, colours. If you click on that, you'll usually see that your brand colours are suggested down the bottom just so that you don't have to look up RGB colours or codes, um, things like that. Uh, you can do alignments, buttons, numbers, hyperlinks. So if you want to link any text, just highlight it, click on the hyperlink and make sure that you include the full address, including the HTTP and click continue. So there's a hyperlink. Um, we can do a button within a panel. So pop in your button text and again, just a full link to go to and then you can have a call to action within a panel. Um, we can indent the text. Uh, this next drop down relates to the size of your fonts. So there'll be four default sizes within your account. There will be uh, a header one, two, three in descending order, header, header one being the biggest, and then there'll be a paragraph font. So that size is you know, for your general um, uh, body copy. So adjust or select the um, the text that you want to adjust and just choose the size that you want to adjust it to until you have it the way you want it. The last drop down here is our placeholders. So most importantly, when your email goes out, you want it to be personalised. Uh, to do that, you pop in your greeting to hello or dear, etc. And then next to that, like we have here, this is an example of a placeholder. We've chosen uh, first name. So to do that, you go over to placeholder and choose contact first name. So what that will now do as this email goes out, it will populate with the first name of each contact in your database. So personalising it. Um, <clears throat> so that's the placeholders. There are some other options in here for you. Um, you can use the greeting section from your CRM. Um, you can put in your agent um, contact details, so a user would be an agent, etc. So that's the placeholders. Um, then over here on the right hand side, like I said, there's lots of options here for you, um, depending on exactly what you want to build. All of these options uh, are usable just with a quick drag and drop. So pick it up and drop it in. 
Um, coming back to this little options uh, wheel here, if we click on this, you'll see any panel with an image will be able to be linked. So again, just make sure it's got the full HTTP um, address in there. Um, you can then adjust uh, the arrangement of your panel. So if you've got an image and text, you can put the image on the other side. Um, you can adjust the column split so you can make that image smaller or bigger um, as opposed to the text. You can get involved with things like image insets, text insets, padding and background colours as well, all here in the options wheel. Uh, once you've made your changes there, just go through and build your email as, as you need to, depending on what you're building. So there's the text only options, image only options, text and image options there for you. When you get down to the property options, these options here will be connected to your feed. So any of these options that you bring in, I'll pop in a grid here, um, will be connected to your feed. You've got a couple of options here in terms of how you bring the feed in. Um, if you've got a group of properties that don't follow a formula in terms of the feed, like latest listing descending, you want very particular properties, um, you could click on the house here to see all of the properties on your current feed and you can just um, you can search for a property if need be um, but once you've located it you just click on it to select it and that'll pop it pop it through into your uh, into your template so that's one option you could build it up that way however there's a lot easier option if you see this little feed toggle here and turn it on that automatically brings in your feed so once uh, as a default this is latest listings current listings uh, so latest listings descending so but we can change that through the define properties button if we click on that you can see here you can adjust how many properties you view the property type uh, listing type uh, whether they're sale or lease listing status and then order by so if you wanted to do something based on inspections you might do next inspection ascending um, or price etc they're all op uh, options for you in um, in the defined properties uh, section you can get into more advanced um, filters so you can look at things like contact interaction inspections and or auctions in the next seven days uh, changes within a time period they're all available in the advanced section so once you've adjusted that you've um, built your email you've popped in your properties uh, you might move forward to a few other things uh, we've just got some layout options here to help you out with lines and spacing and things you might need in terms of um, making the layout the way you want it there's also a full button panel so you can have a larger call to action which works the same way as the in panel button you just click on the options to pop in the button text and the link and down the bottom here, we also have the option for you to add your social media links. So drag and drop that in. If you don't see um, which the, the social media icon that you want, you can go to the options again and um, you can ch change the background color if you like. But over here in the links, you can update your links. You can add another network if you need to add another one with their link uh, and click save to adjust those. And lastly, we have a video option. So if we drag that in, uh, you'll see this choose video button. Click on that. Um, if we've connected your YouTube channel, you'll see all your YouTube clips come up here. If we haven't yet connected it and you have one, uh, you're able to do that in your settings. Just contact support at Active Pipe if you need any help with that. Otherwise, you can just put a YouTube URL here in the top. Uh, works the same way as your panel options. Just find the one you want and click on it to bring it in. Once we've done that, come over here to um, preview your email with a little eye icon and you'll be able to see how your email will look on a desktop. You can also have a look at um, mobile responsive to make sure it looks okay on the mobile responsive version. And you can send a preview to whoever you like. So pop in their email address and click send preview away it goes once you're happy with what you've built just click done and click save to save the email in your account you can always come back and adjust those the, the emails once they're saved they're, they're in your account account forever so you can treat them like a template and that's it